Welcome, Welcome to Cordoba. Cordoba! Today we're going to be visiting Cordoba, the second largest city in Argentina. This city doesn't get a huge number of international visitors in comparison to other more popular destinations, but it is located right in the middle of the country, making it an ideal gateway for exploring much of Argentina. We recently spent a few days in the city, so in this video we're going to show you what you can do with three days in Córdoba. Together we'll explore the colonial architecture, we'll walk through Jesuit ruins that once lay forgotten beneath the city, we'll explore the oldest university in the country, we'll stumble upon beautiful courtyards in full bloom, and we'll also do our fair share of cafe and restaurant hopping. So if you're thinking of traveling to Argentina, let us show you some of the things you can do in the city during your visit. The following is our travel guide to Córdoba, Argentina. Let's begin our Córdoba city tour where it all began, in the Jesuit quarter. The Jesuits arrived in Córdoba and established themselves around the year 1599, and during their time here, they really shaped the city's landscape. That means a lot of churches. The first place we visited was the Cathedral of Córdoba, which is the oldest church in continuous service in Argentina. As you walk in through the massive wooden gates, you are greeted with barrel vault ceilings and lots of gold. Everything is painted gold. The style is Renaissance meets Spanish colonial Baroque meets neoclassical. So guys, we've been walking around the Jesuit quarter and yes. Sam noticed a beautiful looking university and he's like, hey, let's yeah. go in there. I was just walking by him like, this place looks amazing. And it said like, oh, it's a university. I'm like, oh, should we go? Should we not? And then I thought about it and it's like, Cordoba is known as the city of universities. Yes. And we should show you what a beautiful Jesuit university looks like. Yeah. And the architecture is fascinating. Spanish colonial style, yeah, like absolutely. look at these arches here yeah. and those soft pastels, palm trees, <laughs> so beautiful, lovely courtyard, statue, super cool. Super cool. Córdoba is known as a university city given the number of post-secondary institutions, and the National University of Córdoba is the oldest university in Argentina. It was founded in 1613 and it remained the only university in the whole country for over two centuries. We just happened to walk past the Faculty of Law during one of our strolls and we asked the security guards if we could go and have a look inside. It was pretty hot when we visited Córdoba, so another thing we enjoyed doing was cafe hopping around the Jesuit quarter. We found this cute cafe located in a shaded courtyard. And really, is there anything better than an iced lemonade on a humid day? I don't think so. And you know what's another good place to cool down in Córdoba? Patio Olmos. 
This former boys' school first opened its doors in 1909, but after falling into disrepair and experiencing an earthquake, it was restored and transformed into an upscale shopping gallery in the 90s. If you're ever visiting Cordoba in the middle of summer, this place is a nice escape from the heat. You gotta love air conditioning. Hey! We're at the mall. We are cooling off here at the mall. It's over 30 degrees today, so we thought we'd come and cool down a little bit. It's so nice inside of here, air conditioned. Um, this is a really beautiful mall. It kind of reminds us a little bit of the Galleria in Buenos Aires. Oh, Galeria Pacifico. Yeah, exactly. It, which is the one near uh, Avenida Florida in Buenos Aires. Very nice inside. Lots of really interesting stores. I mean, you can go shopping here. Lots of places to grab a bite. At the very top, there's a really interesting place for kids as well. There's all kinds of games, theme games. We saw trampolines. And yeah, we've just been kind of walking around. We've been sort of playing with the idea. Should we get a drink here? Or should we go to one of the more local cafes? I think we're going to end up doing that. But just walking around and cooling off and just sort of seeing what, what there is here. I think this is the kind of place you could pop in uh, on a rainy day or if it's too hot like today and spend a, a few hours here just doing whatever you wanted to do, whether you wanted to go shopping, grab a bite. Maybe there's even a movie theater in here, I'm not sure. Yeah. Ooh. Hey. Sorry, I wasn't wrong. I knew there had to be a movie theater in here. So at first I thought it was at the very top of the mall, but that was just the, the theme kids area. It's actually here, what, on like the second level or something? Yeah. Yeah, so what do we got? We got Batman, we got Sonic the Hedgehog too. Another place to visit in Córdoba is Plaza San Martín. This is the central square in the Old Quarter and it pays homage to José de San Martín. He led South America's successful struggle for independence from the Spanish Empire, and he is known for liberating Argentina as well as Chile and Peru along with O'Higgins and Bolívar. He is the most important Argentine founding father and this square is dedicated to his memory. So we're enjoying a little green space here yes. in the heart of the city. We're in the Jesuit Quarter. It's a place to be. Everyone's hanging out feeding pigeons. Enjoying the shade. Enjoying the shade. Yeah, it's just a, it's a nice, nice place to go for a stroll. So this afternoon we are walking along what is known as La Cañita. And this is a little creek that runs through the city. It is lined with trees and it's just kind of like an iconic attraction here in the city of Cordoba. Sam would join me, but this is a very narrow sidewalk with lots of big trees. So it's kind of like I can join, I can join. a one person lane. There's one, there's a, there's a reprieve, but oh Look my gosh, the worst, the worst one yet's coming. I feel like we can get under. Oh. It's not often that we share the hotels we stay in, but this place was an experience in and of itself and it was a big part of why we enjoyed our time in the city. This boutique hotel is called Virreinato, meaning Vice Royalty, and it is set in a historic home right in the heart of the Jesuit Quarter. The building dates back to 1670 and staying here was like stepping back in time. They offer guided tours for all hotel guests and they also open their doors to visitors once a month. During this tour, you can learn all about the building's Jesuit history and learn about the previous owners who made this place what it is, filling it with an impressive art collection from across the globe. Breakfast surrounded by antiques was a highlight of the trip. We are currently having breakfast here at our hotel at Virreinato. Cup of coffee in a lovely porcelain cup, mm -hmm. might I add. Coffee. We have the media lunas. These can never be missing in an Argentine breakfast. Delicious little sweet croissants. So good. Lovely presentation. Love the environment. 
Yeah, it's just fantastic. I mean, it's like a, it's like a museum in here. Yeah. Man, man over. Show the people. Show the peeps. Look at that, guys. Does it remind you of some place? Yeah, your grandma's place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Peru, for sure. Yeah. It looks like my grandma's house. Yeah. Like the furniture, the decorations, very, very colonial, some European influences. So yeah, it feels very homey, very familiar, lovely chair. It feels very regal. And we're going to enjoy a lovely breakfast. So I'm happy. The ruins of this Jesuit crypt sit underground beneath the streets of Gordloa. This place was originally designed as a novitiate, which was later converted into a crypt and crematorium. It was abandoned after the Jesuit expulsion, and the discovery of the crypt only took place when the national phone company began digging to extend its phone lines, and this is what they came across. So we are now visiting the Jesuit crypt here underneath the city. It was found completely by chance when they were excavating a few years ago. And yeah, the Jesuits arrived here in 1549, so they have a long history, and this is like such a well-preserved place. Wow. You can feel the history as you walk through these arches. So crazy. And it was just hiding underground the whole time. What do you think so far? Loving it. It's just so interesting. You just, you walk down here and you feel like you're stepping back in time. I was telling people they just rediscovered this place in 89. Wow. It's crazy. Excavating. Wow. <gasps> and now it's like, it's, it's in the heart of the city. Yeah. Like you can tell that. <laughs> that makes sense because it's like, you kind of just go down from, from the street of the downtown right, right into here. Just like, wow. Instantly stepping back in time. We also ate a lot of food during our trip to Cordoba. We have a whole other video of our restaurant hopping adventures, but for now, I'll mention that some of the highlights included sampling locro, a hearty stew featuring corn, beans, pumpkin, and various cuts of meat, lentejas, a delicious lentil stew served in a clay pot, and the lomito sandwich, which was this monster sandwich with beef, egg, ham, cheese, tomatoes, lettuce, and more ingredients than I can remember, quite frankly. I could barely bite into it, but it was amazing. Another place to visit in Córdoba is the Cabildo, which would be the colonial equivalent of a town hall. The original construction dates back to the 17th century, though there were modifications after that. The only way to explore the whole building is as part of a guided tour that runs about 40 minutes, which is why we're only giving you a sneak peek. So we are now visiting the Museum of Religious Art and they have a beautiful central courtyard. It's like an oasis here. Yeah. Right in the heart of the downtown, yeah. 
Lots of citrus fruits for sure. Oh yeah. Sounds very tempting. Yeah, I'm so tempted by them. They're so refreshing in, in the sun, you know? Pluck one and peel it off and gnaw on it. And palm trees and flowers. It's just so green. Yeah, it's beautiful, so cool. beautiful colonial arches. So this is a nice little slice of tranquility here. Yeah. For sure. So let's go see some art as well. So even if you're not into religious art, I would recommend visiting this museum for the architecture alone. The courtyard was stunning, and I think we took more video of the colonial building, the fruit trees, and the flowers in bloom than the actual art. But we really enjoyed this attraction. During our visit to Córdoba, we also went to Paseo del Buen Pastor. This is a cultural, recreational, and commercial center in the city, so there's quite a bit to see and do depending on what you're in the mood for. The complex also includes this former chapel that now hosts art exhibitions. I also introduced Sam to two Argentinian icons. La Mona Jiménez, a cuarteto singer, this is a music genre from the city of Córdoba, and the late Rodrigo El Potro, who was another famous cuarteto singer. While we were in the neighborhood, we also tried visiting the Capuchin Church, which was built in the neo-Gothic style. However, it just so happened not to be open that day, so we just had to admire it from behind the gates. Okay, well, welcome to Parque Sarmiento, this is the biggest park in the city. Yep. It is massive and it's actually made up kind of like of different little parks and different components. So we're only gonna be able to show you one small fraction because we are on foot. But yeah, this is a really nice green space. They're actually doing a lot of work to improve and kind of reclaim the park, get it yeah. looking beautiful. So if you've had enough of city life and you need some fresh air, some greenery, but you don't want to head too far out of the city, come. Yeah. Parque Sarmiento. The, the, the so-called lungs of the city. The right here. lungs of the right city. Here. here they are. And some cool art, for sure. Yes. These represent a year. Do you get? Yeah, take a look at this. So, you've got 1887, and behind here, 1886. And as we continue onward, Ooh. 1889. I could be wrong, but they may represent a year of, of, uh, of the country's existence every single year. Yeah, or the city's existence. That could be it. We need to Google this and find out what this art piece this sculpture is called and what it means because clearly it's got some meaning i, I, I thought it was like maybe the olympic rings but <laughs> too many rings for that yeah exactly they don't have the olympics every year so after a bit of googling we learned that this section is called the bicentennial park and there are 200 rings that represent each year since 1810 when the may revolution took place which was a revolt against spanish rule and ended with the formation of the first government of what would eventually become argentina we also walked past the bicentennial lighthouse which stands 80 meters tall and at the foot of the lighthouse you have cordoba cultural center which houses the historical archive of the province a large exhibition hall, and an auditorium. You guys see the eagle? You Check him eagle. out over the shoulder. That was there the, he is. The whole point of sitting here. <laughs> so you can see the eagle. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's the shade, there's shade as well. That's the second reason. Yeah. Well, that concludes our visit to Córdoba. We hope you guys had a good time exploring the city with us. It was far more colonial than I expected it to be. Yes. I think a lot of it has to do with where we stayed and a lot of the attractions we covered, but my oh my! We had a great time. <laughs> we had a great time okay. and I love the architecture, the Spanish influence and the Jesuit culture, yes. the Jesuit heritage was really cool. Yeah, it was a very walkable city too. We were able to cover everything on the ground. And yeah. my gosh, the, what a food scene too. Oh, we, we ate, ate so, so well. well. Oh, goodness. Yeah. 
yeah and the other thing too is we we did come from a very we came from a countryside mm -hmm. setting so it was a, a, a little bit jarring on day one but i found by the second and third day we, we just got into a nice rhythm and we were we were used to being back in the big city yeah and um yeah we had a really good time so i mean guys this is the second biggest city in argentina and it's also a major transportation hub when you're going mm -hmm. to various parts of the country especially if you're heading up north yes to salta or other places so worth a stop and um, we had a really good time. Again, you, we, you can cover everything in a couple of days, two, three days, I would say is, is enough time to, to see and do a lot of things here. For sure. Yeah. And I would say Cordoba City is also the gateway to the Sierras, to the mountains. That's right. Where we are based, where we are renovating our little project. Yeah. <laughs> So, Let's about two hours away. So yeah. yeah. So if you guys ever want to visit, you'll have to pass through the city. Exactly. And that concludes our travel guide to Córdoba, Argentina. We hope you enjoyed exploring the country's second largest city along with us. If you're after colonial architecture, Jesuit ruins, and beautiful plazas and courtyards, this city certainly delivers. As always, if you enjoyed this video, we invite you to like and subscribe. And if you have any other suggestions of things to do in Córdoba that you'd like to share with fellow travelers, feel free to do so in the comments below. That's all for today, and toodles! Thank you.